And welcome back to Star Series Season 3. We are here with Team Adfinim and Team Alliance. I'm Lysander, going to be joined here by Mike Loris. And we are going to have ourselves a fun BO2. Hello, Mike. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. Uh, this game, as you said, is mostly for fun. There is some importance maybe for Adfinim to get one win. Then they, I think, I believe, lock in their third place spot. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong about that. I, I didn't really look. And then yeah, the uh, alliance, drops. alliance. Uh, if they win this, they win the hit to hit um, against Atfinum and overtake Cloud Nine oh. for third place. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So all these teams are, or th these teams are fighting with Cloud Nine for third place, which, in case of a some team dropping, Secret or Liquid decide they can't or won't attend, then they call in one of the third place teams from some tiebreaker i don't know what head-to-head -head looks like there but it's there's some importance here but uh, honestly i don't really see that happening i'm pretty sure liquid and secret are down for going to uh going to the final event so yeah this one should be mostly for fun but i'm interested to see what the uh, alliance are going to bring to bear their hero pool has been fairly diverse uh picking up a lot more leading commander than some of the other teams they're, they're gonna start out pretty normally here but uh alliance do pick up some of the weirder heroes yeah. All right, uh, let's let's go into the you know let's talk a little bit about uh, how the draft is going. We are seeing a lot more lone druid this few days. You know, at the start of uh, our casting of this series, there haven't been as many lone druids, but now, quite a fair few. To be fair, we haven't really seen many in the beginning because it was always banned out. Maybe teams just I mean, I mean look at the bans; they're completely justified. I uh, I would be about just as scared of any one of those heroes as I would be of Lone Druid. So I think this is still acceptable. But uh, yeah, Lone Druid still is going to be that powerhouse. If you're Alliance, you got to think of how are we going to get on top of that Lone Druid. And if you're Adfinim, you got to think of how do we protect this Lone Druid? Do we have any sort of response should Alliance pick up some of these Blink Initiators? Because if Lone Druid does get blinked upon with no Shadow Demon in the pool, no IO for saves in the pool either, saving your Lone Druid is going to be a little bit tough. The three, still got three spots left uh, to actually draft some lifesavers. We got a Batrider now for the off lane, but we also have a potential for a mid OD, which is one of the be better core slash lifesavers that out there. Apart from that, maybe something like a Dazzle wouldn't be too out of the ordinary as well. Or Oracle. You said you, you always mm -hmm. mention that hero when it comes to Five countering up the now. Ogre Ignite as well. So that could yeah. be a play. Purge of Ember Spirits Flame Guard. A lot of things that could go well for an Oracle pick. Ooh. And Bloodlust. Get rid of that as well. But yeah, if you're looking at save type heroes, now you definitely need them because Alliance will have ways of getting on top of you with Ember Spirit jumping in. We'll be able to pull you out with the meat hook. It's uh, you know, quite a few options there for Alliance. And ooh, that's an interesting way to go about the save. Mm -hmm. Earthshaker usually is a pretty good hero to have versus Pudge. Because if your buddy gets fish gets hit with the hook, you just fissure. And then usually they have a decent shot at escaping. Is a very clunky hero, however. You're looking at Earthshaker Rubik as your support duo up against an Ogre Magi Pudge for Alliance. Alliance's supports are just going to be bullying Advenem supports if it comes down to it. Mm -hmm. The... Darkseer, Pudge plus Iron Shell threat is also there. So now that the Darkseer has come into play, Team Adfinim will know that Alliance only lacked that hard carry role. Alliance so we'll be banning out that Slark against Loda. So in that case, I think Loda will settle for his next favorite uh, carry, which is Juggernaut. But we'll, we'll see if he does go for that. They have a last ban here. It's going to be a mid laner, I believe. And what does... Remaining. No. What does Ember mm. not want to face in the middle lane? <laughs> Anyone. <laughs> Doug, Ember, Ember's matchups are usually going to be yeah. pretty Resource tough. Uh, Adfinim do have quite a bit of control from their supports. They What they are really lacking is going to be damage. Uh, so getting a, a high damage hero for Adfinim should be pretty important. If they get one with mobility, that would be quite nice. Escape the kind of CC light opening of alliance mm -hmm. uh shadow fiend may be a little bit vulnerable in that regard quap is not too bad od also a fairly powerful hero in this uh, in this situation for the ad finem squad 
I think Thug maybe has played Batrider mid before, but I, I doubt that's actually going to be the case. So yeah, I'm like I'm looking at those heroes for adding them. Yeah, they've done that. It actually fits pretty well here. Ooh, they bend Necro. So they're fearing the Lone Druid mid, uh, Madara on the Necrolite again? Interesting. Seems to be their thought. I mean, the heal with Lone Druid is already pretty powerful. Pretty sure they could have handled an, a Necro, honestly. Alright. Well, well, we'll see how it goes. How it goes. I haven't watched Alliance play in Five quite a while now, remaining. but I do remember uh, Loda being quite the Jug enthusiast, so I wouldn't be surprised if he picks up that Juggernaut now. It's actually a decent hero in this uh, situation as well. You have someone to push the towers, you have someone to dish out the physical damage, whereas Ember will dish out the magical burst. So overall, I think it's not too bad to pick up the Juggernaut here. You can you also go agree? for some someone with a little bit more inherent mobility, like a Phantom Assassin or someone like that, mm -hmm. to get on top of a Lone Druid a lot faster. Like, Juggernaut is very powerful with Ogre Magi setups. Uh, once you catch someone in Rot, you can just beat them down very easily with the spin, or even with just right clicks. But oh. when you're in the mid-late stages, if Adfinim are really looking for that Siege opportunity, if you get the jump on a Lone Druid with the Phantom Strike, you may just be able to stop that fight from ever occurring, or just, you know, half-health Lone Druid is not going to be a super significant threat. So that's mm -hmm. also a possibility here for Alliance. Uh, somehow Luna is also yeah. still in the Luna pool. Luna is not banned. Not picked, not yeah. banned. What? I was like, eh, that's Juggernaut. Yeah, there you go. See, Loda plays Juggernaut. When it's available, he plays Juggernaut. So it's going to be Invoker for at Finim, and wow. Okay. Uh, they got Lasso into Black uh, into the Sunstrike. They also have Rubik's and Earthshaker Stun. So lots of lockdown to follow up with Sunstrike here on uh, at Finham. So we're gonna have a pause going out here. At Finham did have internet problems the other day, but hopefully it doesn't affect their play too much. Let's run through the teams very quickly. On the right hand side we have the Greek squad at Finham with Thug on the Invoker has that Dark Artistry set. We have the Spartan Rubik Madara on that Lone Druid maybe next time on the Earthshaker. Batrider played by Skylark and on the right on the Dyer, we have the Swedish squad, three quarters old complexity, one fifth, or what, three fifth old complexity, one fifth EGM, and one fifth living legend. The loader on the Pudge. Wow, loader, loader Pudge? Wait, I'm I'm getting blocked here by the clicks. Oh, no, the loader yeah, Juggernaut, yeah, okay. Loader Juggernaut, hand skin on the Pudge. We have EGM, Ogre, Jonathan Fan on the Dark Sea, and we have Limp on the Ember Spirit. So yeah, how how are you favoring the matchup? Sixty forty, or more, uh, less? Just off of draft, I think I like Advinem squad a little bit more. Alliance's lineup for me is a little bit too melee heavy, with a huge reliance on getting blink vacuum walls off, getting hooks to land. And Advinem do have good responses to that. Like they have the initiation on their own terms. They'll have tornadoes and Fissures to kind of jam that combo up from Alliance. As far as like punishing melee heroes, Invoker is definitely one of the better mid lane heroes at doing it. Earthshaker is an all-star at doing it. Uh, Batrider is great in lane and Lone Druid has the Savage Roar. So you know, Alliance, they really do have to just kind of brute force their way through this and try to get on top of this Lone Druid, who is going to have a lot of defensive backup, but also should be getting, at least from time to time, a good bit of alacrity. And, we already know how dangerous Lone Druid is with just like a Maelstrom and a couple talents. Add a Lacrity onto that and it gets pretty disgusting. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Thug will be going for that Sunstrike and like we said, there are a lot of setups for that. Although, I wouldn't be too surprised with a Quas Wax build. I know it's really rare. It's really good against the Ember Spirit mid. So, we'll see. We saw He, he has that, one comf go that comfort. We saw mid one go for like a hybrid. one of everything, but mm -hmm. prioritizing Exhort by the end. Being able to purge off uh, Alliance's squad, pretty much all of their heroes, uh, purges, a purge effect is going to be very, very nice to have in your back pocket. But you don't really have to like invest a lot of Wex Quas to make your tornado really strong. You just need a little bit of it. Well, let's see if Hun uh, Hunskin is a good pudge. I haven't seen him play pudge much yet, but. Uh... I haven't seen much of Alliance anyway. They haven't, they haven't been making it to that many events, which is sad, you know, because uh, being TI three winners and all. But 
we'll see how the new squad, or rather relatively new squad, handles up against that Finham. A team that has gotten quite a few merits in the past few tournaments. Not doing too well in these uh, qualifiers, but still. Have been doing better than Alliance in the recent times. So, mm -hmm. I'm going to favor them because of that. But overall, I think the Alliance team are on some rather comfort heroes. So, Loda on his favorite Juggernaut. Got Ember Spirit. Yeah. Limp has been playing a lot of Ember. And Pudge is actually going to run into a couple heroes right now. With no backup, he really wants this rune. Oh, Cold Snap on Tanskin. Yeah. So, that's Quas level 1. That's not good. <laughs> That's uh, that, level that's one. fine. Like, they do jack the rune, so Loda actually gonna get two of them? Oh man, this is the first time I've seen a hero get two bounty runes from the get go, so that's quite nice for him. Uh, Quas level one is. I mean, honestly, anything level one isn't really going to be of huge use right now. You're probably still gonna get a good amount of exhort, so Thug may miss a couple CS in this very beginning stage, because Invoker's base damage is just terrible, but. Uh, Cold Snap, I would say, is probably uh, you know, pretty much just as powerful as Sunstrike in the early stages at, you know, level 1 Invoker. Yeah. Well, we'll see how Loda does against uh, Batrider, but ultimately I don't expect him to be doing too badly. He's going to be able to purge off the Napalm stacks very easily and uh, not have too much trouble in this lane. So his supports can come into roam, but don't really need them around. Could gank middle. Cause some trouble, and it is a Quaswex Invoker, so I feel a little mm. smart. Rubik and Earthshaker setup is, I would say, adequate enough to go for a little bit of sort and try to get those sun strikes going. But I mean, who are you actually oh, going to be sun striking? Maybe you Nine. can set up for killing Loda, but you need Loda to make like a huge mistake to go down this lane yeah. because like, Napalm miskin. does not work against the Juggernaut. Yeah, a miss spin is probably what's gonna cause Loda to die. But then again, it would be a huge mistake on Loda's part. Mm -hmm. Darkseer's, Darkseer's getting a lot of farm. No contest at all. Rubik, Ogre have uh, pretty much ditched the Rubik doing the Radiant Ancient pull. So, yeah, that's the one I was talking about. Look at that. They He aggroes the dragons and then throws them on the low ground, pulling it over. So... Denying a whole wave to the Ember Spirit. And that's how Thug gets away with a Quas Wax build because you have that problem with damage when you play Quas Wax. And now, yes. oh, Limp might find an Ancient Dragon. That's gonna be a big one to get. He does get one. And now he's gonna start with the Ember God. Maybe next time. We're gonna throw him down to the low ground. That's bad. He doesn't have any way out. Limp outplayed. And now the EMP as well. Maybe next time we'll be looking there. The Fissure to lock him out. But no, the hurt from Hanskin will punish. The Invoker, and that will be first blood here to the Swedes. Very sick hook there from Hanskin. We'll secure that. And 0 to 1, and somehow Limp walks out of there alive. Great job. Uh, I'm going to call misplay on Thug's part. I, I'm i pretty sure he was just short on mana for casting both an EMP Tornado, which was definitely the plan there. If you cast Tornado, you get rid of the Flame Guard from Limp and then you can just right-click him down without taking any of that magical damage. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to worry about Limp, you know, not standing in the EMP AoE. So uh, he just walked out of that one, and it did literally nothing. So if Thug just used Tornado, I'm pretty sure that's a kill for them. Uh, still Hanskin in the right place at the right time, and it is going to be Limp getting away with one steal on a dragon. And yeah, he's level 4 right now, oh, uh, level lead above the Invoker. Alright, so he pulls over the creep aggro, so Hanskin gets walled right off. And that's going to be a very simple kill there. The Rubik even coming in, and they might just group up for Sanctuary now. Skylark wants to get that maximum EXP from the lane before going there, and yeah. So, one for one now, Alliance will tie back the score, or Affinum will tie back the score. And this is a really important lead for Limp to have over in, have over in the mid lane. Uh, mostly because of this Wex build from the Invoker, you can expect his base damage to really be more so on the low side. Uh, that's just what happens when you go for a non exhort build. Oh, he dodges a tornado. Still and gets it with the EMP, though. Bottom, they scan. The Rubik is going to lift up that Ember Spirit. They cold snap him up, but there are creeps coming in, so I don't think it's going to be a kill. They drop an Observer in the middle lane, but uh, also, bottom lane, the Radiant did actually drop a scan on the smoked up Darkseer and Pudge. So they knew that they were coming. Rune of double damage. 
Dara is going to face up against creep cutting. As far as heroes are concerned, Lone Druid is definitely a hero that can handle getting his creep wave cut by the Darkseer. But still, it's a free farm Ooh, lane for this Darkseer. Dara. Hands can helping. Oh, first, first hit, hit root. root. Nice. <laughs> That's uh, foreshadowing for this game. I'm going to get that good that kill. And uh, Shaker, does it find a good block? I don't think the Fissure is going to be long enough to lock out the dots here. So not going to attempt that. Maybe next time it's going to scoot on out. Maybe steal a bounty rune. And that sucks so much. Uh, he's still really in a, a terrible position, even if that wasn't the first hit route. I'm pretty sure the chances of him going down at that point are still pretty high. But yeah, it's just, as you said, a little bit of things to come. And for right now, Alliance, their cores are leading the way. Lone Druid is still keeping up because he is able to tank uh -oh. those Ion Shells. Jonas and fans going to run to two supports, but oh, good fish, these yeah. aren't really deadly supports. Yeah, well, here comes Adara, and I think he's pretty deadly. Nope, no stun. And uh, Jonas and Fan will actually get out of the way in time. No shrine for him, though, so he goes home. Top, Skylark. Yeah, he's fine. Oh, EGM dropping really low there, 6 Stacks of napalm. Nearly bring him down, but he is a tanky ogre. So he will be okay. Walk them one off and be okay. Dyer's Meanwhile, Spartan walking attack. around as the Rubik has that observer ward. Really just waiting for the bounty rune to steal it. That's all well and good. But Advinem right now with their supports don't really have that much game versus Alliance. I mean, this is really where just the natural bulkiness of Alliance is going to be carrying them through a lot of this early game because Advinem are really light on damage until they build up this Lone Druid a lot more, until they build up this Invoker a lot more. Until that actually happens, there's really not that much that they have to fear from this Earthshaker and Rubik. Again, unless they get like grossly out of position. So Alliance are going to be running this game for the first 10 to 15-ish minutes until Thug and Madara get their items up. Oh, and Pudge we have sees Rubik invisible, yeah. Yep. It could be a really easy hook because Spartan going to be... Having a little bit of hubris, thinking he's invisible and all, and then Anskin's gonna drop the hook! Oh, he misses! So, Spartan knows that something's up. Madara. Oh, meanwhile, Madara. Getting Killed a kill off. on the fan by himself. Yeah. And top lane, they're going for Skylark. The living legend strikes, and uh, we'll secure that kill. Batrider goes down. Alliance. Getting some kills on the board. But Hanskin, very sad on that hook there. Could have maybe waited a little bit more. But now they'll de-ward, knowing that there's vision up there. So, cost the team the ward. That was a very aggressive move there from Skylark. Trying to dive a tier 1 tower. Even without the rotations coming in from Alliance. Just like, you're trying to kill off an Ogre Magi with Stick. That is very, very difficult if you're a bat rider. You know you're going to be racing against a Juggernaut. And that gave the Juggernaut level 6. So, this Omni Slash effectively brick walls any one hero out of this lane just because yeah. if, if they're all alone you get omni slash and you're dead so this is a pretty much locked down safe lane for the alliance squad loda should have free farm from pretty much here on out even mt like right now got to be a, a little bit careful here because loda can just run at him and start spinning yeah loda is skipping on face boots for now actually yeah looking at his inventory he's going for the helm first and skipping face boots. So the, the Omni Slash might not be as big as a threat as you might imagine. Because the Batrider does have Tranquil, so it might not be able to catch him out. Skylock sees EGM, but I don't think this can evolve into a kill. Meanwhile, Madara getting another kill on that Darkseer. He has been playing very, very dangerously, this Darkseer, to be picked off again by a Lone Druid. I mean, even with Rubik's help, you shouldn't be dying. If Rubik didn't even help him there, I don't... Oh no, he actually did. He did get the telekinesis off, but... Yeah. Yeah, Darkseer should not be doing this poorly, uh, death-wise versus Lone Druid. Limp's gonna come on in. We'll oh, find Madara. Madara, he's out right? of... He didn't no. turn on his Flame God, though, so... He's just okay. gonna... He just placed all the spirits and leaves. Just sure. a warning shot, so to speak. But yeah, Darkseer making us look bad. Really don't expect him to die there, Madara. Oh, chaining onto the Rubik. The hook comes in. Hanskin will rot hug the tornado a little bit off the mark there. Spartan gonna try for a very optimistic TP. Gonna fail. Madara now run down there. Lassoed up by the Bat Rider, and he will be brought down by Madara again. That's four kills in a row now. Madara going for a first hit root. Calls the bear. Says root. 
One, two, three. Nope, that's gonna be a shrine. So immediately back off there. Discipline for Matt Finham will keep them alive. Meanwhile, Loda. Going to be chipping away at this tower. Yeah, and force rotation from the Invoker in these large scale fights. I really need to land EMP Tornado on a couple of heroes if you're gonna have any sort of impact as a Wex Invoker. I mean, you do have the movement speed with the phase boots and your Wex build already, but trying to chase after Alliance is kind of dangerous because of how easy it is for Alliance to turn things around. First of all, they can retreat pretty quickly with Surge and Bloodlust. They can also turn around very quickly with an Ember Spirit or a hook that can land, yes. and then your movement speed doesn't count for anything because you're just dead immediately. So yeah, Thug's rotation, unfortunately, not quite good enough, but at the end of the day, we still have Madara, who's getting kills where he really shouldn't be getting them and is closing in pretty quickly towards that lightning hammer. So this is about as free farm alone druid as you can get, plus getting a couple of solo kills. Jeez, he's 4-0-0. Zero, zero. Madara yeah. has gotten a lot of those hero kills. Yeah, and that's why Hansken is there. Oh, is there an observer scouting this out? No, there isn't. The observer what from the Radiant, actually. Wow, that's a very aggressive Rubik. There's a TP in, there's a surge up punch. But Rubik has the backup of Invoker, Thug drops the EMP, and actually the Ember Spirit stops his TP, so Hanskin, does he have bite? He does not! There's the vacuum back in, the Savage Roll will peel them away from this Invoker. Thug going for the Hanskin kill, does he get another one? He needs one more right click, Limp doesn't have any abilities ready, but Thug on the root has the Ghost Walk, and yes, the root. Spartan kills off the Darks here, but Madara now will find an illusion. Again, Alliance slipping between the cracks there. Handskin. On Handskin is still back here. Yeah, Bear to he's... tank. Oh, Madara, there's a TP out. Will there Watch be a Savage Roll? Root. Nope, there's no Savage Roll. So Madara will peel away. And uh, get a, be happy with that assist kill. But Limp going in. Does he go for the chain route? No, he does not. So no prediction play there from Limp will ensure the Rupert gets out. But meanwhile, Loda having a good time there with his Helm of the Dominator rush. Gets the Hellbear on the board there, increases attack speed, helps with farming as well. Can farm Ancients with it. Have, having a body to get in the way of any sort of gank or something like that. The Clap does quite a bit of damage as well. I mean, Affinam are fighting a lot on this bottom lane. They're keeping Madara involved in these fights, and there is a lot of value to be had with that. But as, as you're saying, like, no one is actually paying attention at all to Loda, mostly because any one hero can't stop Loda from doing what he's doing right now, except for Madara. And if you do that, you run the risk of losing your lone druid, in, and then you're just wasting his time and you're feeding Loda even more, so oh, it Ember. is the correct move to keep Madara here, but that's just letting Loda get very, very far ahead, so Advinem are costing themselves quite a bit by doing this. They can turn things around though in just a little bit once Skylark gets his blink dagger, then applying pressure to Loda is at least possible with a smoke gank or just a you know three hero gank. Yeah. The arcane rune picked up by Thug. That's a really nice rune to get as well. And with that ghost walk, oh, Johanna some fan is actually really low. This dark seer has not been having a good game, and uh, fortunately for him, no, he's gonna go jungle. So that's gonna be an easy pick here for Thug. He says, "All right, wow, that's an easy, easy kill." Gets that tornado off, and one more right click will do the job, and a very easy pick. And, and EMP maybe deploy here. They have Shiro's giving chase, the punch gives the hook and will latch right across when with that uh, This member as well will find the invoker with the sentry ward means no way out So overall turns out to be a better trade for Alliance Invoker does have his hand of Midas now though so scaling into some exhort points Diversifying into a little bit of alacrity is at least possible here for the invoker and Lone Druid is getting to that point where he does need it Loda TP's in bottom Spins and Spartan steals that spin as well. And I wow, will nice. not let them get any kills. Madara immediately ports out as well. Smart play, going top lane to keep up the farm. So he's been trading pretty decently in terms of farm against Loda. There's a Batrider blink. They grab one of the fattiest heroes, heroes to kill there. There's an EMP, burns out all his mana, and with that cold snap, should take out the ogre. So they went for the easier kill. Uh, the Pudge tried to go for a save, but wouldn't have dislodged the thing anyway, so... Add for them to score one more on that kill, kill board. Wow, 3-2-2. Three, two, two, yeah, MNT is level 7 at this stage, so maxed out Fissure is up and available. Rubrik does have a really good spell stolen in that Blade Theory. Magic community is quite nice, plus you're up against all these melee heroes. Hook again, 
Oh, oh, they TP in yeah. that that centaur Loda. and uh, Loda goes in with a really nice Omni Slash and Yan Shell stolen Omni Slash though. Gotta really run away. Yep, it's gonna take that one down. So Loda scores two kills for the Darks here. Actually, did all the work, but Darks here steals everything. Dust is popped. Hanskin realizes that the Invoker is near, but will not be able to reach him. The Lion strike back. And they will get some damage done. Skylark might be in range for a hook now. Nah. Loda's gonna walk right up. He's very familiar with his hero, Loda. Juggernaut is his thing. Level 3 healing ward as well. Easily balancing out with that Firefly, so... Loda and Limp don't really have much to fear. They don't go push extremely quickly. Like, this build from Juggernaut is rather utility heavy. Pretty yeah. defensive with the helm into the boots of travel. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, again, no phase boots or anything like that. No Yasha, so... Tower takes barely any damage. It's bad for IPM to lose those heroes, sure, but still they're not in the worst spot because those two heroes they, they lost. They know the Invoker is here. He's in sentry ward range. They're gonna spin, catch the Invoker. Invoker is gonna realize uh, Loda gets juked by himself. And uh, Thug will actually not be killed off there. But meanwhile, Madara getting picked off there by Hanskin on that Pudge. So a big kill going over to the Pudge, giving him some extra money for some nice items. Maybe an Aether Lens, maybe a building into that pipe, or even the Yagadim Scepter. Wouldn't be too bad for him. Madara just wanted to rush down the tower, trade his life for it. It's pretty expensive, but it's a tier 2 and ended up dying and letting the uh, Alliance squad get that deny. So, pretty big feel bad there, though. Thug and Skylark oh. are setting up for a kill on Loda, which is what they should be doing. They're not oh, going to anticipate these two walks into them, though. This could be trouble. The Batrider. Regress this edition now. He goes for the lasso, but immediately gets back back then. So that's a bat rider going down. I think Loda gives him the crit. And that's Omni Slash in 15 seconds. Shouldn't be able to catch Thug. Thug has that ghost walk. And uh, yeah, Loda will be left in the dust. Madara coming in though for counter attack. Is it revenge time? No, sir. Alliance high up score 8 to 8. Alliance are doing a really good job at keeping Loda now that he's gotten these base items, travels especially. Involved in these engagements like he hasn't really had a chance to use blade fury on any lane opponents because there haven't really been any Opportunities there, but he's still using it to its fullest extent He's still getting uh, the threat off with Omni Slash and even getting a kill with Omni Slash from time to time So Loda bouncing around all over the map is uh, Gonna be very similar to what limp is gonna be doing in just a little bit since he does have his veil of discord and He does have his spell amp talent They are ready to just jump in and assassinate these ad from heroes and just use their natural tankiness to get in and get out without that much of an issue. Adpinem now have to be the ones responding to what Alliance are still doing and for oh, sieging purposes, Madara's not rushing quite in. There he yet. has that Omni Slash Loda. Will he strike? He starts with the shot and we will go with the spin and chase away MNT away from that creep wave, but not gonna dive with that Omni Slash, valuing that tower even more than uh, that solo kill. So gonna peace out for now. Didn't want to leave himself with no options to escape. Felt like he could have gone going for Roche, though. Madara found a double damage rune. Yeah, that's an easy one to get. Oh, and he hit his bear. He killed Roche, grabbed the Aegis, and then hit his bear. I don't know why you would do that. That's animal abuse. Hit his but bear. But still, he's got the double life. You, you can hit your bear? Yeah, man. Nice. Or he hit like an item that was there, which is yeah. I don't I think don't. you can hit your bear. But yeah, I, you can definitely do it. Maybe when it's poison or something. I don't know. Or like below. Because it counts as a hero. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Take your word for it. Yeah. Bad, I, yeah. Okay. Bad. But well, we do have. Uh, in the meantime, while all that was happening, MNT not dying. Very importantly is able to get a blink dagger off of this last fissure on the creep waves. I think this will lock up his blink dagger. So MNT with an 18 minute blink dagger considering the pace of the game, considering his opposition. Yeah, in a pretty good spot, all things considered for Shaker, but there's gonna be a fight brewing. They don't have the blink dagger on the Shaker for this fight though. Oh, the shot's coming in. <laughs> this time he won't avoid it. Loader dices and slices here, but now he gets pulled there. The Bat Rider. He's gonna lock down Loda. Loda collapses there under the power of the Lone Druid with alacrity. Holy crap! Down he goes. Have, do you see that attack speed? Especially since it's an alacrity build one. The attack speed was up a lot over damage. And he, he has wax alacrity. Wax. Has, yeah, wax alacrity gives more attack speed than damage, but uh, the attack speed is a lot. 
And with Bloodlust, that, that was pretty insane. Yeah, stolen Bloodlust. Only level 2, actually. Oh, yeah, uh, it's a Max stolen Ignite. one. Max Ignite build from the Ogre Magi, but okay. still stealing Bloodlust and Alacrity. 220 this damage a pop. Game is he has the broken. damage talent. Uh oh, okay, Madara is. Spirit. Yeah, you gotta run. No lasso, though. No fear. Go. No. Hanskin getting caught there. <laughs> the lone druid throwing sickles from 900 range. Oh, he gets a deny though. And now the Yule Scepter set up here. Wolves lock down the darts here. He gets pinned non stop. There's no running from the druid. And uh, he's gonna pick off one by one. Toss and forget. Toss and forget. Dara, Dara is able to stay in the game. back lines for all these engagements, then Alliance are just completely screwed. Like, they need blink, a Blink Dagger on, like, the Darks here in order to get around that, or they need the Ember Spirit to just be in a better position to get around that back. But Madara has, like, all the movement speed and attack speed in the world, and they're just gonna ride this Lone Druid all the way into the Tier 3. It's through bottom lane, you don't need to deal with that. Yeah. They have the Demolish on the Bear, plus the Blightstone, and, of course, a truckload of damage on this uh, Lone Druid proper, so... Uh, yeah, they'll lose the bear. The bad rider has lasso again. He pulls the ogre. Poor EGM. Always the fodder and loader. Has Omni Slash in five seconds. Do they want to go for this? Madara has the alacrity online. Loader goes in. The Echo Slam comes out from MNT. It doesn't do that much damage, but it locks them down, scares them about. Jonathan Fan goes down after pulling Madara into the wall. But the Ember Spirit loses his shield with that Yule Scepter. Yeah, the Invoker. Bought that one just for him. Specialty. Loader lifted up. Here goes the ham. Perma stun there. Loader gets brought down. The hook will pull Madara back in. But it's not even gonna be a kill. Skylark forces him out, but the urn will tick. And that will be enough there. Loader buys back into the game. They really want to get some vengeance. At least the RNG doesn't work out for the Ember Spirit. Spartan now getting chased down by an Ignite. He should go down. Loader will take his uh, anger out on him. There we go. Loader hits him and uh, it will be Limbs kill. But Madara doesn't really want to stick around. He does have Savage Roar though, so he can actually buy that space. Uh, Loda decides against it, but will he be able to outrun the range of the Druid Sniper? The answer is yes. And uh, Alliance yes. will hold, but barely. They lose a Rubik. They keep all their structures alive. I, I guess that's something for the Alliance squad, but uh, I mean, they're Had just to buy barely coming together with these answers, as you said. Uh, they still have no significant answer to Madara, who at this point has another item in his inventory. It's just like a Hyperstone worth of attack speed in the completed Mjolnir is already really big game. He just turned around and was very confident in his ability to do 1v1 in the Juggernaut. As farmed as Juggernaut is, he can't head-to-head -head Madara with this much farm, especially once that static charge drops. There's just really no chance. Omni Slash even not guaranteed to work because of the bear absorbing about half mm -hmm. of those attacks. So. And Madara is being pretty well protected by the rest of his crew, and yes, they do lose the Aegis there, so they're probably not going to apply a ton of pressure right now. But still, they have this luxury of running around with a Wex Invoker. They have Blink Dagger on, obviously, the Batrider and the Shaker, so kickoffs are pretty easy. Uh, Alliance now are going to start feeling the hurt of not having any ranged control. Yeah, the... Should have gone for a Blink Initiator, like you said, and Darks here was supposed to fill that role, but he is actually having a terrible game, so that option is very limited to him. He has actually opted for Greaves instead, and Jonathan Fan now, yep, like I said, Darks here having a bad game. Hook doesn't work like that, you have to grab the Bat Rider, and the Lift comes out, tosses him onto the high ground, but Dara's here to claim his life, and so that is another death on the Darks here. Seven now, oh, actually eight now. And he doesn't have buyback. I do believe Madara will be able to tear down this tower. And I think this is the first game we actually saw the ranged druid being absurd. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we saw very powerful lone druids, but this just feels like a broken lone druid. Yeah, this is when you. Yeah. Always frog up. Madara going into melee form. Yeah, look at it, Rex. Where did it go? The, Omni, uh, the Echo Slam on a Ember Spirit solo. MNT. Might have overextended himself. We'll go down. Loader slices him with the Blade Dance, but it will only be a kill for a set of Rex. Batrider forces onto the high ground. Oh my lord! How is that? Balance Madara! Yul Scepter, Juggernaut into the air. He does have Omni Slash. Spinning might not be the right idea. The lift. Gonna cancel out Handskin's hook. Oh no. Madara. Gonna get backed in there to the wall, but they're all so damn tanky. Loader goes in with the Omni Slash, but like you said, absorbs all the hits the bear does. 
And now, they're going to be chasing after Madara, but he pops a Savage Roar and a hit back to base. Hanskin, you should not be here. This is not your base. And Madara is a really fast hero that shoots at an unlimited range. Hook misses. Madara styles on him. And now Loda got to get hit there. How is this balance? Gets rooted. Gets hit from a million range away. And now he gets he brought down fight. Madara. He's going to solo there. Man pops a Savage Roar. You run, I hit. That's how it works. Madara... Gonna let the Invoker finish off the darts here. The thug very low on health and a lot of them are gonna be fighting Madara, but he's just soloing them at this point. He goes for EGM as well and it's a triple kill. Stands and delivers and, well, this game is looking pretty over at this point. Alliance. And this is, like, games like this is, like, why we see teams banning out the Lone Druid because yeah. if you get, I mean, to be fair, I guess any hero, that's 5k ahead of the next uh, next highest competition is going to be putting on pretty much a full clinic. But Madara is keeping himself at a very, very safe Ooh. range, is There's attacking clear, yeah. very hard with Lightning Procs. And, you know, all credit to Adfinem, they have given him a really good start. They made sure that he you know, had that good lane up against the Darkseer, and he himself got the kills in the Darkseer. So, yeah, they worked to get him up to this point, but. Now that he's at this point, Alliance, they need like a Batrider type hero in order to deal with him. And, and obviously they don't. So the only replacement is have a Pudge land a hook. And so far, yeah. just Hanskin has not been able to land that hook. I mean, Hanskin had some cool performances, but uh, yeah, like you mentioned, this game has just not opened a lot of opportunities for Pudge to flourish. Batrider constantly scouting out the smoke gang from Alliance, their uh, desperation attempt almost to try and get this gank going. Lone Druid now has two ultimate orbs on him, so that's more health. And he has a 50 second respawn reduction. So <laughs> you kill him, he might just come back. Oh, Thug gonna get chained up. Maybe this is the kill they're looking for. The hook that blocked by the bear, whether intentional or not, pretty cool. And uh, look at that, two sickles at a time, they're going in, that rider pulls on the Ember Spirit, Ember Spirit gets EMP'd and right onto a Sun Strike as well, it's a minimal Sun Strike, Ember Spirit goes in, the Echo Slam is there, the control all around the Bat Rider, is he gonna get away from Hanskin? He probably isn't, and uh, he does go down in the end, Loda finds Madara though, Loda strikes back Spartan, is he getting critted up? Nope, not gonna get crit, Loda will not kill that guy, but he does pick off. Madara's Wicked Sick, so that is a big kill to go to Jonas and Fan will afford him his Blink Dagger very soon as well. Thub now gonna look to style and Loda. If he can, yep, Cold Snap is there. Gonna be dispelled, but Alacrity hurts, doesn't it, Loda? Runs away, the Sun Strike almost on point, but Thub might have outstayed his welcome. Gets back back in, and Hanskin finds him. A good kill, going to Alliance, and a overall one team fight as Madara gets brought down with the Batrider Invoker. But he's already back. Thanks to this <laughs> stupid talent. <laughs> yep. Can't get rid of him that easily. Oh, the man. big difference that Inner happened in that fight compared to the other fights is that uh, Madara, well, I mean, he was doing a pretty good job at like 1v3ing off on the left side, but there were really like two fights going on there. One where a whole bunch of Aptinem heroes were beating on an alliance kind of uh, closer to the south end of the fight, and then Madara, no one was able to get in the Juggernaut's way to protect him. The bear was also, for, I think, dead? Or for whatever reason, not with the main guy. So he took a full Omni Slash, took a full spin, and uh, Loda is uh -oh. gonna tell Loda, Loda, Loda. That's not how you Dota. Oh no, Juggernaut tries to juke out of there, tries to put down the healing ward, but the Scotty is just too much for him. It's a snowball fight here with Madara, and he's winning. Oh no, Skylock. Gonna get chained down for a bit, but that's gonna not be fatal damage. Limp. It's decently yeah, fun, um, but yeah. Teleporting into that is a bad idea. You can't 1v1 the Lone Druid unless you kill off the Lone Druid there first, and then that you know kind of guarantees an Omni Slash. Uh, and you don't really know who's there because you don't have enough vision. Uh -oh. So that Fisher, was just suicidal and, oh, no, and a Savage Roar as well. I'm gonna throw out those snowballs. Jonathan Fan doesn't have that vacuum anymore. Oh, the wall is stolen by Rubik, not as big as getting that vacuum. So he's gonna deploy that wall on that dive base. Jonathan Fan walks right into it. So like, oh crap, that's not mine. The walls are gonna keep Adfinum out. For a while. At least for right now. They don't wanna fight into any sort of advantage there from Alliance. So they can't fully capitalize on the fact that they got a pretty nice uh, pick off there on a handful of Alliance heroes. But still, towers are falling slowly but surely. They already have a Rax advantage from before. 
Uh, and it's not like Lone Druid's gonna start falling off him anytime soon. He's gonna get he's that hurricane slots. pike, he's gonna get this double yeah. life. He's pretty happy still, and Alliance, they, they almost have to fight this. They yeah. don't really have much of a choice. They're coming in, Loda is not smoked up. He will be the bait of choice, and yes, they choose him! I choose you, Loda! The hook again! Not gonna work out for him, but he actually does peel at the last second, because the hook actually managed to latch, so he will actually escape in time. Limp, now that the jig is up, they will distract Atfinim for a while, but will Alliance manage to do enough damage to actually get this Roshan steel going. The Ancients trying to give a little bit of help to Alliance, but the vacuum here stolen by Rubik almost sets up a critical failure here for Alliance, but Rubik now gonna pay for his insolence. Loda chops him in half, but is there gonna be enough? Spartan buys back, they really wanna fight this Aegis. Madara, playing it safe for now. Lip going forward, they hook in the bear, that's the bear down, so okay. Lone Druid will have to fight fair now, not rely on his pets. But the Lion is still just posturing. Not going to overextend anywhere. Sunstrike will detect a possible steal coming in. EGM says, I'm a solo Roche. Stand back, guys. Stand back. And uh, looks like it will be a ceasefire. So Alliance did it. That was really well played by Alliance. Like, yes, Loda is going to get grabbed out by the Batrider, but he doesn't die. They kind of uh, waste the Earthshaker's ultimate by putting themselves in a position where normally you would funnel into this very close quarters so that Earthshaker can just slam jam you, but uh, they kind of wait to trickle in, so maybe next time's ultimate and fissure combo doesn't really do all that much. And because they're able to save Loda, they pretty much expend absolutely nothing and add to them use all of their ultimates. They yeah. pull out a buyback on the Rubik, but I mean, they really need to push this advantage right now because there is no echo slam you force out a buyback but they, they're also just not comfortable going into the scenario because of how weak they are compared to what strength admin m have on their squad so it's a big win for alliance but it's not big enough illusion from loda loda getting a blink dagger will really uh, be expending more resources to it. Oh, nice hook from Hanskin. Gets the Batrider. But will it be in time though? The vacuum is there. Latches them down. Skylar buys back. That's a shrine to TP2. He even has a boot to travel. So he'll get back into the fray a lot earlier. And again, Alliance managed to push back the Greeks at the Roche Pit. And this time, Roshan is rather low. So mistakes here could cost them that boss fight. We'll have to be careful. But I was mentioning, Lotus Blink Dagger means more investment in non-damage items. He is leaning pretty heavily on his Omni Slash on his spin to do the majority of the damage. Uh, I mean, at least for spin, you keep yourself safe from the lightning damage of the Lone Druid. So uh, it is reasonable to assume that you could use that spin to finish Madara off. Uh, I don't think Madara is going to have any life steal anytime soon. I mean, his next item queued up is Butterfly, so uh, it's not likely that Madara is going to be able to brute force his uh, way through everyone again. like that. But it's another hook angle. What? 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 That was bullshit! What? <laughs> that was crap! Oh my god! Loda gets a freebie dealt over to him, and now the Roshan is left at 10% health? Well, who's abusing hooks now, Alliance? Who is abusing hooks now? Oh my god, everyone saw that. That was bullshit. <laughs> Holy the crap! Right. How did it go through the bed? What? Well,. I think that's Ice Rock's back door into Lone Druid's OP. He's like, yeah, you can hook through his bear. <laughs> what? Sometimes the Lone Druid bear decides to start phasing through hooks. Oh, man. <laughs> normal. Okay. Hanskin's gonna feel really good about that because he was a blind hook, right? But he did see it from our perspective. So that... That, that was, was silly, crazy. Dude. That was silly. Alright, but well, the bottom line is Alliance finally, finally, finally initiate Amadara. Able to take him out first thing, and after that, if there's no immediate fissure, lasso, tornado to help him out, the rest of Adfinem kind of just crumble. I mean, the amount of damage these heroes can do is really not that high, and Boker's level's mm -hmm. pretty good. He's now getting a little bit of extra Exhort. He does have the Aghanim Scepter, but up against all this tankiness from Alliance, you need a little bit more than just a farmed invoker, especially when you lose a lot of your damage coming out from the lone druid, so that, that is what they have to keep doing. That was kind of a miracle hook, yeah. but uh, <laughs> hey, it's it's a start, right? They That's still a... have the Aegis on Juggernaut, which is going to keep Adpanem off their backs. Yeah, that, 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 that was a hook and a half, as they call it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, someone shot that, please. I want to see it again.
The great part about that odd shot is gonna have you calling immediate bullshit on that. <laughs> there are some BS hooks, and then there are hooks like that, man. That's just like an, yeah. on another level. How is that allowed to be in the game? And they're also constantly getting illusions of the lone druid. He isn't really teching into like a ton of stats. He does the Eye of Scotty. He has, a, I guess, the Hurricane Pike, Dragonlance. But you know, the lone druid illusions also kind of just destroying him. Uh, if he is able to get some lifesteal Madara, then I would say that these fights will be looking pretty differently. But he does have a Hurricane Pike. He does have a lot of just raw health. Yeah, well, now the smoke gang. Oh, maybe next time I'm gonna walk right into an Ember Spirit. Does he have backup? Yes, he does. So I have to really back that one up. Lincoln Sphere. They put the urn on the Rubik, so he will not be able to blink. And they chain him up. Four stuff away defensively. I gotta posture a little bit. There is the black. Oh, there's the vacuum, though. The meteor goes down. The juggernaut is spinning through all that. And the lack of magic immune piercing is gonna cost them. Madara getting full on the slasher by Loda. Brought down and limp with the spirits as well. Gonna bring down the Batrider. The Echo Slam does minimal damage. Only Darkseer here dying, but he's used to that by now. Thug on the way out. He had the spells, but he did not have the preparation. Al Alliance just came crashing in the front door. And they take three lives. I'm actually kind of surprised that Alliance aren't getting hit with a little bit more damage from this Invoker. Like, they don't have a pipe or anything like that. Their magic community is pretty much just like Ember Spirit and Juggernaut, which is you know, reasonable, but everyone else is still pretty healthy. And again, that's pretty much doing no small part to Guardian Greaves, the fact that these heroes are just naturally very tanky. And again, uh, Madara does not really have much time to sit back and right click. In all those previous fights, you know, in the kind of 18, 20 minute range that we saw of Madara just kicking everyone's ass, there was no pressure on him. And it, it seems like Alliance finally got their stuff together with his Blink Dagger on the Juggernaut. Uh, yeah. Limp is focusing on him a little bit more as well. And Darkseer has his Blink Dagger, so he's able to bypass pretty much the entirety of that front line. Advenem still need these lassos to land. I mean, even though this is looking now kind of rough for Advenem, if they just lasso one guy, I'm pretty sure Madara can kill off that one hero. Then the map opens up a little more for them. Yeah, well, the sweet superstars are doing it. They haven't had a break in a long time, and it's a long. This is this is one hell of a break, and that's why I love casting Alliance. They have that, you know, they have that aura around them that just creates magical games. They're one of those guys. And that's why the Alliance have many fans. Even even through the even through the tough times. But now Loda, and he's then alone. Occasionally, and then occasionally they just run out with the single hero all alone and they get picked off. Loda, very fortunate there. Aegis. That Advinem decided not like a bait. to go for him. <laughs> Looked like a bait. They had an Observer Ward, so they knew that it was most likely Loda with minimal reinforcements. They had Skylark Thug in the area. Yeah, Batrider now is. here. One more Invoker time. is there, but do they want to try and really risk this with an Aegis on board? Advenema deciding. They see Alliance scooting down with the Observer Ward, and I think they decide against it. Yeah, They're just going to try and split push, cut the wave once, and TP away. Oof, Juggernaut now with the Mjolnir. That is such a great item to have in this circumstance. Uh, you know, creep clearing and whatnot is, is great. But getting that static charge, yeah, you are going to be returning a lot of lightning damage back to the Lone Druid, considering how fast his attack speed is. So, very Mike, I'm powerful. gonna need you to hit F6, man. What? F6. Oh no, Madara! Oh, okay. Okay, the hook. No, Loda! Now the hook works against him, hooks him out of the Omni Slash. Henskin, you're fired! Lip! Gonna go for the chain, the Shiva's God is there, will they kill off Madara? Yes they do, the old man is dead! The tornado comes in, but Loda is immune to magic, he rolls in, he spins, he takes out the Earthshaker, Limp is gonna be there, going ham with his magic damage, Ember Spirit, hand skin. Gonna pretend that that didn't happen. But yeah, Alliance have climbed back from that 10,000 gold lead. So many heroes just jumping on Madara, even when he starts to peel away, as fast as he may be from Rabid. But he's back! Uh, yeah, there's just way too many heroes jumping on top of him, but yes, he is back! Level 23! <laughs> back in 20 seconds! <laughs> oh, load up! Lincolns! He has like a bloodstone in his talent tree. Pretty yeah. sure that's what it looks like. But Alliance can still fight this, even though they didn't force out a buyback or anything like that. Uh, you're in a position where you can just sit back and have Hanskin spam hooks 
forever. Yeah. Okay, hold up. You know Lim? He has the Lincoln Sphere, and he clutched Lincoln's loader a fraction of a second before the Batrider lassoed in. And it actually wasted the lasso, so... Really cool little play there from the Ember Spirit. It looked, I, I, it was so quick, I thought Loda had a Lincoln's himself. There's a lot of single target jank that I've seen him have to throw at that, but also like double Yule Scepter. Uh, you have Cold Snap. Uh, this is actually a pretty high value item. If more heroes can get it, that would be really nice for Alliance. Looks like we do have an, actually another one being built on the Darks here. He is already pretty bulky with the Shiva's Guard, but Lincoln's Sphere will make that Rider's life so much more difficult. And I said it earlier, I'll say it again, Skylark needs to be landing these lassos first thing. And it's a lot hard to land lassos when there's going to be a whole bunch of Lincolns flying around. Yeah. Now Loda picks up the Frost Armor. Just wants to make himself a little harder to kill. And then once he gets close to that squishy interior of the Lone Druid, he's going he's gonna to have a good time. All limp, though. Yeah, he's alone and he is very, very dead. There's the Echo Slam as well. They commit a lot. What? Does he juke away? He does. And okay. Loda Omni Slash the Creep Wave. Yeah, this game doesn't want Ed to win. This game has all been escaping by the hairs and Thug. Is there a gem on EGM? No, there isn't. And Loda does not get the kill, but the Glimmer Cape is there. So, Loda's gonna have extra protection here. Mionia done for him. Top. Barton Rider, there. oh there's a back in there, Spartan gonna get picked off, Loader going deep in there, looking for the kill, one more hit, we'll get the job done, the Iron Shell, almost, oh, okay, a wall for the Rubik, and he jukes, whoa, and now Loader is gonna be on the receiving end of Madara, gets Brock down, and there is your Darth Seer spun into the air as well, Spartan galloping away, back to base, and baiting out two big kills for Adfinum. The Greeks strike back and the Alliance find themselves reeling. Crazy, crazy play. That was Lotus Lotus cool. stopped moving in the middle of that. I'm not really sure why, and then he like blinked after the Rubik. If he just like stuck on the Rubik with spin and just kept on right clicking him, I'm pretty sure you get that kill and it's just a cakewalk, but they kinda gave Rubik that chance because of that blink forward from uh, the jugger. Like once the blink is eliminated, Spartan knows that he has the mobility advantage up against these heroes. Duke's now with the blink, and that's two heroes down for Alliance. And Madara, he still sees just heavily, but hook! Oh no. Madara in trouble. That buyback comes out, and oh, Madara is low. He has the BKB, but it's a late BKB. Will it be enough? Limp already buying back. Loda is here as well. There's the spin to dodge that Savage Roll that will be inevitably coming out. Loda has a blink, but he doesn't want to risk this. If he goes in too fast, gets hit by a fissure, the game could be over. So right now, we're gonna regroup, and we're gonna have that fight. Go over again. It's only a buyback on the Juggernaut. The Doxer held on to his. Yes. But Loda is not healthy enough. They yeah. lost the shrine, so they don't really have an easy way to restore Madara's HP. So uh, it doesn't seem like there's any play that's really possible here for the Adfinim squad. They do need to go and contest this Roshan, though. They, again, can't kill it right now because if they try, they're just going to get their asses kicked. If Madara isn't healthy enough, so they have to wait for him to regenerate up. But. I don't know if Alliance can actually jump in themselves and kill off Roche. Ember Spirit really isn't an anti-Roche hero. Juggernaut's build is kind of mediocre up against Roche, even with the Bloodlust. So Alliance, they yeah, are going to have to camp wolf. this area out. But they do have Ember Spirit with Travels. I think they have a couple heroes with Travels. Oh, Spartan. Oh, Vax Loader out of there. He was actually just checking. <laughs> and he actually gets Loader. So Loader panics for a second, and they will actually be alerted to this Roshan attempt. So right now, at Finham, are gonna reposture, and we have a deja vu. All right, let's see them bullshit hooks. Let's go. Skylark has a arcane rune lasso. Mhm. Mm it's gonna be value so, if he uses it. Let's check out the vision from both sides. Radiant have no vision of the dire here. They have a gem on this bat rider. So right now, both teams are gonna be very cautious. You don't want to play with. Loda's life now. Loda has to be careful, stay behind, and uh, not risk his life. Meanwhile, Madara oh, can can be a little bit more risky because you know, he can take a little bit more risk with his life because he does have that uh, short respawn time. He has now picked up the savage, savage roar as well. So 10 yeah, seconds cooldown. 
he's probably capable of soloing Roche at this stage. But if you only commit the Lone Druid into that Roche pit, that means there's a high chance of him being the one to get hooked out, and then then things get really bad for the Adfinum squad if they're fighting without their Lone Druid. So, Travel's advantage, really important at this stage. I think it's one to oh, Adfinum and Alliance. Oh, Tried to be fancy. And, uh, yeah, goodbye. Limbus unstoppable, actually. The rest of the night K. I mean, he has... He dodged that gank on the bottom lane just by the skin of his teeth. He has an Octarine at this point, so just health-wise, he's doing pretty well for himself. And there really hasn't been a chance for Madara to sit there and just focus this Ember Spirit down. So okay, this Ember Shaker really having looks to deal like with that he's about to do something dumb. Uh oh, nope, gets hit by Lotus Illusion. But they're going in, Handskin. Throws out the hook, doesn't pull in anything. But the Shaker still thinking about it. He has that Echo Slam. That. Oh, they jumped on Bat the Bat Rider getting there. caught! Limp! Gonna blow him up, and now that Yule Scepter is there, sets up something. The Earthshaker will port, so, uh, will blink, so he will be okay. But the Roshan is going down, so Loda picks up his second life, which is very important at this stage. The Thug has to be careful! The Omni Slash goes on to him! What are F and M doing? They're separated, and they're going in one by one from different angles, allowing Alliance to pick them apart. 26 to 29. This game looking shaky, Mike. Shaky. Uh, I've been trying to be a little bit cute with just uh, stalling for top lane uh -oh. where Madara was able to take down a tier 3. But uh, now with no buyback on Thug, this defense is going to be a little bit rough. They do have a lot of stall tactics. Earthshaker here, Batrider always a threat. But Alliance, I think, are powerful enough just to fully commit into this. Testing for buyback, sure, first. Make sure you have that to check mark. But uh, oh, they have fun here. They get lasso, they oh, throw no. everything on him, and Loda is very deep in the action. He does have Blade Fury, but uh, that's assuming nothing locks him in, but Loda's too quick for you, my friends. He blinks Hook away, stolen. the hook stolen! Whoa, latch up punch, a face of his own medicine, but the snowballs give chase. The Bat Rider is going to throw out the flames, it's not going to do enough, and they're going to pop the shrines, heal up, the defender's advantage is going to play into full effect here. Alliance will not claim any Rexes. And uh, AF hold, even without Thug. Nice steal from Ruby. Nope. No Lincoln Sphere protection there for the Juggernaut this time, so nice clean lasso to eliminate the Aegis. Does he still have Cheese floating around? Cheese is on the Dark Sphere for right now, so they still have that, but they don't have the advantage of uh, being able to fight 4v5, so Advim do make a pretty nice hold. Madara also finally completes up his item. He's been working on this butterfly for an extremely long time now. He does need to keep getting damage items just to be able to tear through those. I, I say I will say softer support heroes, but you know not super tanky heroes on the alliance side as infrequently as he may have chances to hit them. He does need to get more damage and make sure he keeps on farming. But he has died quite a few times uh, in this game compared to what we expected given his start. But now that he has his butterfly up, he might be able to manhandle his juggernaut on a one v one basis with that evasion advantage. Uh, Limp now has the perma root, so that's that's fun and interactive. I, I want to mm -hmm. see it happen though. That'll be fun. Pretty sure Limp can't. I mean, he could use it for like a very utility-heavy reason, just like you know, keep Skylark out of the fight or something like that. But Lincoln's gets reduced cooldown as well, so you can always put it on Loda. Locking down a, a lone druid and killing him off as an Ember Spirit, I. I think is still out of the cards for Limb. I may be underestimating the amount of damage this Ember Spirit can do. But if you perma chain someone, you might be able to pop uh, force a BKB out. Oh, Spartan, you think you're clever. EGM gets that one. Fire Blast. Pure skill indeed. 26 to 30. Alliance get a pick on the Rubik again. He's uh, He's been trying to do some fancy plays and getting caught. MNT is going to wall this off, which is not even completely safe. They have ice walls, they have rock walls, they got all the walls, keep the Swedes Style out. Up. I get ready. The Lincolns is there, and yep, yeah, they're going to spin right away. The lasso was held. The Lincolns held on to as well. Ember Spirit. It's now Ember Spirit versus Bat Rider. Let's see who applies their, their ability first. Kind of a surprisingly low amount of hooks being thrown out by handskin in these situations like you would think that like you get to a Go spot fishing. where you're 
right in the front door. You're just going to be throwing out hooks nonstop as long as you have the mana to dismember afterwards, but hasn't really been doing that, so Alliance kind of uh, limiting their own opportunities in that regard. Yeah. Well. Juggernaut slowly getting bigger and bigger. Oh, Lotus, you could say greedy build actually starting to pay off. He, he went off really greedy with a Helm Rush into Boots of Trebles. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were nearly punished for it. In fact, they were losing middle racks, but then the hook happened. They got a few Aegis fights in a row. And the Gold Graph starting to look really peachy for the Swedes. Noda's gonna complete uh, I have Scotty very quickly as well. Even more HP for this Juggernaut. Seems like the Lone Druid wasn't able to significantly cut through this juggernaut. I mean, 26 Ooh. armor is, is going to do that for Lib. you. Lib, perma chains. Let's do it. Or just kill him. Yeah, okay. Okay. Oh, nope. jukes it. And there's the Lincolns. But he's still rooted in. He's rooted forever. And they got him. Lib is wicked sick. A five second root. Pretty strong. Yeah, they kill off one of the wall makers there, so it's pretty much now up to Thug. Thug's been having a pretty rough time keeping up with the farm. His, he did have a hand of Midas, right? He must have sold it to get yeah. in one of these items. Uh, really, either way, the Invoker needs to be able to spam out his spells. He's level 25 at this stage, so it's not going to get any better for him. He's gone for the AoE Deafening Blast. I think it's a reasonable choice up against what Alliance have. I think either one at level 25 would have been fine, but yeah, Thug has really not had a presence of a level 25 invoker that you would really expect. Yeah. Maybe not as comfortable on the, the hero as you might imagine. He's played it quite a bit. Just not sure what's going on in this game. Not warmed up. A couple of reasons could happen, uh, but now the Shadow Blade. Too much gap the closing shape. at this point. Yeah. It's very hard to focus and cast spells when you're getting constantly pinned down by a juggernaut that runs at you. Loda's mm -hmm. been pretty liberal with the spin and run up into you, so it's uh, it's pretty scary when someone's so confidently running at you. You always think that he has some backup, even when he doesn't. And his farm isn't really that great either. Yeah, uh, he, he's running at you with very little, just a buck. No bite. Two K on the invoker is same thing as the dark seer, pretty much. Except dark here, seer has a sh sheep stick. Invoker is, I mean, he has got BKB, which is kind of nice against some of these Alliance heroes, but really does need to have some of those you know, offensive tools as well. Like, he has a Blink Dagger. I'm not really sure if it's done him a lot of good, given how fast Alliance are able to close these, these distances now. He needs to keep farming, and along those lines, where the hell did his Animitis go? Could I think really he sold it for a emergency BKB. It's very likely. Yeah, I mean, that's the only well, thing. He now has 6,000 gold, so. That's the only reason I would imagine you'd sell your Midas, but there's a backpack. Put it in there. I hear that's pretty good. Yeah, backpack's uh, pretty amazing for the game. But, uh, yeah, 6,000 gold. Probably gonna get an Octarine Core, or maybe an Assault Cuirass. The bear doesn't seem to get it, so. No, doesn't seem to want it. And he has a Demon Edge, so I assume that will be MKB? Could be Daedalus, right? It is a Daedalus, alright. Yeah. Uh, Thug can also go for a Sheep Stick. Like, they, they need these just like super high ticket items. Their control is, is all still kind of there, but it's not landing, so you know, give yourself more options to get the initiation off on someone like Loda, or if you can eliminate limp first thing that would be in a really good spot but ember spirit is reaching that full late game ember which i don't think we've had the chance to actually see full magic damage this guy used to be building battle furies and daedalus but now he's getting octarines and veils talents changed the game mm -hmm. i mean look at lone druid they, they left out alfredo now no one uses the bear anymore but hey it's if it's gonna get that late, it's never too late to start putting items on the yeah. bear. Twelve slots. It's always it's always like a running joke during drafts. Like, oh yeah, you got a twelve slotted lone druid technically, but uh, 
never ever happens. But in this Zara game, also it just might. Ditched his boots. And now Roshan. It's gonna last long. Madara doesn't really have mobility advantage any longer. He has Flutter, he has Scotty, and Hurricane Pike, so he has some ways of keeping in the back of the fight, but no huge movement speed advantage given to him. Yeah, Does Bear have anything? Bear MKB have for Loda means the butterfly is useless, so. Yeah. That's rough. That's real rough for Madara. Like, he's the only one who's doing significant damage, and it's not even guaranteed at this point. Uh, MNT can still step up and get a good echo, but he has it on cooldown for some reason. I must have missed that. And uh, Invoker also can step up, but Stug has been having some difficulty. The tornado flying out there. They're going in pretty deep to make a fight with Alliance. Like, this move from Skylark, I would say it's fine if the enemies didn't just take Aegis. Oh well, they're... They're just waiting and trying to see if they can get a pick. That's the whole concept of a bat rider. But we're all reaching level 25 and uh, I'm interested to see what the talents for Pudge, Ogre and Doxia would be and even maybe Earthshaker. 2 second Enchant Totem cooldown. Rubik, not close. Batrider, not close. Pretty sure Ogre is just Bloodlust talent, no brainer. Yeah. You're not really casting spells for damage, okay. you're just casting spells for their... Jumping in, Skylock walks into a Pudge, it's a really tough target to kill. Just kidding, he's soft and like Tofu. Goes down to the Lone Druid spam, and oh no, the stolen hook on Loda! But now the Ember Spirit goes in, but he's getting hot critted here by Matara. Jonathan Fan will go in, try to bail his buddy out, that's the Bat Rider going down. The Pudge buys back into the game, Liv jumping in, that's the Shiva's guard, Jonathan Fan. It's gonna chill them all with the Shivas. And now the Hex comes out onto the Lone Druid. He's isolated. The Savage Roar is there, but it's not gonna have it. Limp is not gonna take that. The Pudge finds the Invoker in the middle of the fight as well. The buyback comes out from Rubik, but all of those heroes are dead. Loda is on a triple kill. Rubik, Invoker, as well as the Earthshaker buys back. They're all that Adfinim has left. Well, maybe the Lone Druid could buy back as well. Yeah, the Lone Druid can buy back himself. 25 seconds, he really does not want to. The tornado will come out. Chain stun loader up. The Earth Shaker comes in. Loader spins to hit that tower. The Sun Frank lands. It's not gonna do a lot of damage, and Loader goes for the Raxes. Limp once again going for the perma chains there. The creep tanking it for the Rubik. And uh, this Rex is probably gonna fall. The Lone Druid doesn't want to waste his buyback on this. He wanna just bank it on that last set. Uh, on that last defense. Get that double lives going. Alliance for their first Rex of the game. Great pressure on the Lone Druid, they're not done yet. Dog, gonna get hexed up, gets back, back in, and the bite as well, but the stolen vacuum, the epicenter, oh, the echo slam, sorry, maybe next time comes in there, stuns them up pretty well, but the Aegis is down, and now the hook again, finding the Earth Shaker, Henskin, late game, landing all these hooks, Skylark, can only watch his friend go down. They try to pull Loda. Is that a lone druid? There is. He crits up Loda, but Loda comes in with the Manta. Will have that counter play. Hex on the lone druid, almost pulling him out with the hook. Skylock has the BKB, so front lines a little bit. But they're out of Invoker buybacks and the Earthshaker buybacks. Madara dropping low. He has the buyback. He buys back. He doesn't have the bear, though. He's the only one left with this Bat Rider, and I don't think they have the power to stop Alliance at this point. Juggernaut is just too damn big, and they're too damn tanky for him to kill. The threats from Alliance are a little bit too diverse. Like, everyone is tanky, first of all. Everyone has ways one for wanting themselves out of the fight, and Adfinem don't really have a lot of damage on their non lone druid heroes. So yet, they're occupying Alliance for a good amount of time, and we saw Spartan and uh, MNT pretty Perma much- chains! Like, oh, three times in a row! I'm sorry. I had to say it. Oh, that actually happened. Permachain and Loda ends the game with an Omni Slash. That game was legendary. I'm sorry, what, what was the point you were making? I'm sorry. <laughs> MNT and Spartan, they locked out Loda from that last like top lane fight. He was fighting just a couple supports. And he was, it actually looked like he was losing that fight. But there was not enough support for the Lone Druid. Like, th these heroes need to base their entire playstyle around keeping this lone druid safe because he's the only one doing damage. 
And Alliance, they have the Ember Spirit doing damage. They have Loda, obviously, doing a lot of damage. And everyone else, just with just by being so tanky, they can just sit there and always right click and always just run at Thug. Thug, in that mid lane engagement, like at the very end as well, you're not supposed to be able to get hit with the vacuum as an invoker. Like, especially, I mean, you're level 25, I guess, but uh, you're supposed to be very, very far in the back throwing out your spells. He never really had a chance to, you know, do that whole invoker combo of really anything because he was always being pulled into the front yeah, yeah it's uh it's 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 kind of cool alliance did this face rush lineup you know if you haven't noticed they had five melee heroes so that's all their lineup can really do run at you and uh yeah really overpowered overpowered at Fedum. but i i i don't want to say this but really that glitch on the hook or whatever you want to call it broke the game they were so close to getting that aegis and then they got hooked out mm -hmm. at the last second. Invoker didn't have the damage to finish off, finish off the Roshan. They lost two heroes that way. Gave the Aegis back to Alliance, giving them more time to farm, more time to capitalize on that map advantage. And from there, it was just downhill. You know, they got the equipment to actually deal with Madara. And uh, yeah, Alliance, a miraculous comeback. Legendary. Sometimes you just need a really silly hook to land. Oh, in order yeah. to win a game and that, that definitely was the turning point because up till that point they were not really challenging madara especially with the pudge banana knows that feeling well and uh well <laughs> That's Al true. alliance uh, now they're gonna get a taste of uh, what it's like to be using the hook to their advantage but that's only game one game two does it promise to be better ultimately i don't care i just want another game like this it's pretty cool and, uh, yep, Loda really carried well on that Juggernaut, but ultimately, both teams played really well, and it was a great performance. But we'll be hopping into game number two very, very shortly. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Star Series Season 3. I'm Lysander. He's Mike Loris. We'll be right back. Watch Love and Kappa.